Up never sounded so good. Bear us your medical mumbo jumbo. Hello. Welcome in to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. Oh my. News, weather, sports, and of course, all the local info you need to start your day. Is that a real show? No, it's somebody's making a joke. Forget it. Talk of the Town on 103.7 WTIB, 94.1 WNBU, Cable 7 in Greenville. And now, listen or watch live at WTIBFM.com. Everybody still awake? All right, big finish. Now, here's your host for Talk of the Town, Henry Hinton. Hey now, welcome in everybody, Talk of the Town. It's uh, Monday morning, January 29th. It's raining out there. Rain could be heavy at times. It's going to be kind of a nasty day all day today. And then tonight, uh, overnight tonight, um, western part of the state, we'll see some snow. But Matt Engelbrecht is here at the news desk this morning, and uh-huh. he's saying uh, over here just rain. Not bl- mm- likely. Maybe, kind of maybe a flake or two. Yeah. But Mainly along the border, North Carolina, Virginia border. But uh, you think we're done with snow for the year? I hope. I don't think so. No, you know, we, we can have snow all the way up through March, God, just based the way on the way things come together here. <sighs> I don't like snow. Yeah. It's going to be cold this don't week. Like snow. That's, that's going to be the bigger story. Yeah, twenty-two overnight on Tuesday night. Yep. Um, going to be interesting, but uh, luckily the precipitation gets out of here before that. Those frigid temperatures come back, right? Yeah, the clearing lines coming through right now should be heaviest rain should be out of Pitt County, eventually through Craven County by eleven o'clock noon at the latest. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. Uh, six minutes after eight o'clock, uh, Trent McGee is here. Good morning, McGee. Good morning. Some good basketball over the weekend. It, uh, that was a big win for NC State over Carolina in Chapel Hill. Yeah, it was a huge win. Guy's getting it done at NC State, didn't he? Keats, yeah, yeah, he is. Now, is it your? professional opinion <laughs> excuse me that this is a situation where if Godfrey had been given one more year the people were in place for him to get her done and Keats is reaping the benefits of that I mean because a lot of times we see that or do you think if they kept Godfrey they'd still be doing what they were doing no last I year? think this is more Keats than, than, than anything do you else really? I think he's getting more out of out of the players that came back and I think some players came back because Keats was hired so interesting I think if Godfrey was still there you might be seeing what you saw last year the so the uh, <clears throat> headline with uh, Joe Giglio's uh, column this morning, the News Observer, is Tar Heels headed wrong way at midpoint. Mm-hmm. They've been struggling Accurate. a little bit, haven't they? Yeah. Meanwhile, NC State. Wow. First time we've seen NC State with this kind of a surge in midseason since the Valvano days. <sighs> what they've done has been I mean, they've beaten four yeah. top 25 teams. Wow. And Duke loses to Virginia? I think it was the first time since 73 both of Duke and North Carolina have lost at home yeah, on that's the what same I heard. day. So Duke and Carolina lose at home both on the same day. It hadn't happened since 1973 mm-hmm. until Saturday. How about that? Uh, East Carolina, uh, you know, the Pirates shot the three well yesterday down at SMU, but I tell you, SMU is just so good. I watched, they are. They're tough I watched to the there. first half of that game on CBS College Sports. And the Pirates are back home uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night against Tulane. That's a winnable game, right? It is. So we need a big crowd out Wednesday night to cheer the Pirates on as yep. uh, they come back home. And then baseball starts February 10th. Man, we're almost there. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. We're 16th, actually. Is it the 16th? 16th, yeah. What did I just see in this email from uh... – oh, it's the, uh, the, the, the banquet is February 10th, the 2018th uh, Pirate Baseball Banquet. In Minji's Coliseum, I got an email from uh, Cliff Godwin last night about that. Um, Going to be in Minji's on the uh, 18th, uh, on the 10th, um, and the speakers are going to be uh, P.J. Connolly and uh, Corey Scott. That'll be cool. Yeah, be really cool. Uh, Mayor P.J. Connolly, who played baseball at ECU, and tickets are on sale now. I'm presuming you can uh, contact the Pirate Club. They got a lot of neat uh, things they're going to do during their uh, auction. They got a Luke Keekley autographed jersey. They got uh, that's cool. They got a, a a tan leather ECU Pirate baseball glove. They're going to auction off. Oh, nice! A gray leather custom ECU Pirates baseball glove. Uh, team autographed bat. Team autographed framed jerseys. Dinner with the coaching staff. They're going to have some neat things. So. Uh, a Mike Wright or autographed Orioles hat. Nice. Don Mattingly autographed bat. Mm. So that's coming up uh, baseball. February the 10th. Saturday, February 10th in Minji's Coliseum, the ECU 2018 baseball 
uh, kickoff banquet with uh, uh, guest speakers uh, Mayor P.J. Connolly and uh, former ECU, well, not former, he's a, he'll always be an ECU All-American, Corey Scott, who pitched, uh, he was the closer. He was the hammer when I was doing the games on the radio when Keith LeClaire was the coach. You know, if it was uh, if it was Corey time, the game was over. <laughs> Corey time. Because Corey would come in and strike out the side in the ninth inning. <laughs> yep. He was something, man. I still believe, uh, I think I'm right about this, I think he has, he still holds the NCAA record for most saves in a single season, which was, I think, 23 saves that year. Pretty good stuff. Uh, all right, uh, coming up, we're going to get into this story. If you missed the, uh, if you missed my soliloquy on this uh, in hour number one this morning, what I think is a huge breaking story out of Raleigh this morning that no one seems to want to report in the mainstream media up there. CarolinaJournal.com yesterday broke the story. You may have heard on Friday, late Friday afternoon, that Governor Cooper had uh, agreed to have the Department of Environmental Quality issue permits to allow the Atlantic Coast Pipeline to be built. Now, as you know, I mean, he's been opposed to this since he's been governor. Uh, governor McCrory, of course, got it started, and um, the legislature was um, in favor of this pipeline, which is a natural gas pipeline coming down out of uh, West Virginia into Virginia and uh, terminating down uh, somewhere down um, in southeastern North Carolina. I think, you know, down there around uh, Roland or somewhere like that. It's a 604-mile pipeline. So all the environmentalists were going crazy about this and saying, you know, we can't let you build this in North Carolina. This is North Carolina. We can't have a pipeline running through North Carolina, natural gas pipeline. And Cooper opposed it, opposed it, opposed it, and all of a sudden Friday approved it. And nobody really understood why until Carolina Journal on Saturday broke the story that the companies that want to build it, Dominion Power and Duke Power, paid a $57.8 million payment into some escrow fund that nobody knows what it is designated by the governor. Now, I'm not suggesting that Cooper's taking this money and spending it on his own, although he did spend $9,000 on Carolina basketball tickets out of his campaign fund. That's a different story. But, but here's the point. Who negotiated this? Where does the money go? Who gets to oversee the money? And since when does the governor just get to say to two companies, if you want to build something in North Carolina, you got to pay money into this little fund that I got here? Since when did we? I mean, that's this thing stinks to high heaven. The News and Observer, crickets, not a word this morning. None of the, uh, none of the libs in Raleigh want to report this, and I don't really get it. But we're going to get to the bottom of it this morning with the guy that wrote the story in Carolina Journal. The editor of Carolina Journal, Rick Henderson, is going to be with us in just a couple of minutes to tell us what he knows about this. They got a quote from uh, Joe Coletti, who used to work at the um, – he was a budget analyst at the State Office of Budget Management. He actually said that the dictionary defines something like this as bribery or extortion. Was it a quid pro quo? Did, did, did Cooper say, if you put this money in this fund, then we'll issue the permits? And I go back to what I said last, last hour. It, can you imagine if Pat McCrory had done this? Can you imagine what the News and Observer would be saying this morning? <coughs> I mean, you know, Cooper hasn't said a word about that. Where's the money going? What's it going to be used for? Since when does the governor get a $58 million slush fund, especially when it becomes after, you know, a comes uh, to the state as a result of a shakedown over issuing permits for building a pipeline? I mean, this is, this is, I just can't understand why this is not a huge breaking story all over the state this morning. But once again, there are some media that choose to report it, some media that choose not to. It's just like the $9,000 that Cooper spent out of his campaign fund for Carolina basketball tickets. You know, uh, it, every, every single thing that McCrory did during his years as governor was scrutinized over and over and over and, and spun in a negative way. 
you know, News and Observer, Cooper spends 9000 for basketball tickets out of his campaign fund. No problem. Fletcher Hartzell does that stuff and goes to prison. One of the state senators. So we're going to get into this in a few minutes, 15 minutes uh, after 8. Interesting stuff. And uh, McGee will also have sports coming up. Talk of the Town brought to you in part this morning by our friends at the Tire Realty Group and Property Management Team. Uh, Greenville real estate market, folks, is on fire right now. Just can't tell you the importance if, you've been, if you're thinking about, if you're even remotely thinking about listing your home in the next few years, this would be the time to do it while the market's at an all-time high. So list your home now, and if you want to sell it and sell it quickly, you should list it with a tire realty group. They will sell your home in 99 days, or they will not charge you a commission. The other thing I love about working with uh, Tire Realty is no upfront fees, and uh, they're also um, they will not charge you uh, anything if you want to get out of the contract. You know, being held to the six month contract and all that stuff. And here's the thing: if you're thinking about making a move, if you've got professional sales experience, or you just want to make a career change, you should talk to them also. Because they're looking for good people right now. They'll train you to be a first-class real estate agent, and you can take advantage of this red-hot hot market and increase your income. Just uh, talk to uh, the Tire Realty Group today at 758-H-O-M-E or visit them online at 99orfree.com. That's 99orfree.com for the Tire Realty Group and property management team. And, by the way, they lease homes as well. They're looking for homes to rent right now, so contact them. All right, 16 after, when we come back, Rick Henderson from the Carolina Journal. What is the story with this payoff from uh, these companies that want to build this pipeline in North Carolina? And who knew about it? Where's the money going? The whole deal. We'll be right back with Rick right after this. It's the Big Zero event at Greenville Toyota. Put zero down on new Toyotas. Corollas, $14,999 or $149 a month. Camrys, $19,999 or $169 a month at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Don't miss the action when the Pirates take the court for a doubleheader on Saturday, February 3rd. The men's team will look to tame the Tigers of Memphis at 2 p.m., followed by the women who will tip off against the Mustangs of SMU at 5. Be among the loyal and bold by purchasing your tickets over the phone at 800-DIAL-ECU or online at ecupirates.com. Be sure to paint Minji's purple on Saturday the 3rd, starting at 2, to show your support for Pirate Basketball. We're celebrating our second anniversary here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, and we're just so glad to be here in Washington. Washington is a very special place, and we really enjoy working here, serving people, making sure our customers get nothing but the best. Here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, we offer a great selection of new vehicles and the best buying experience anywhere. Come see all of us here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. Time with your family and time to yourself. Good things happen early. When it comes to cancer care, the earlier the better. Early cancer screening and treatment can save your life and the lives of those you love. Believe in the power of early. Believe in the power of Vident Cancer Care. Talk to your doctor about screenings that are right for you. 
We're starting the new year with zero down on every vehicle. It's Greenville Toyota's Big Zero event, where you put zero down and make zero first payment or get 0% financing for 60 months. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Twenty minutes after eight o'clock. Welcome back. It's a talk of the town Monday morning. Nice to have you here. We've been talking quite a bit this morning about this uh, story that broke on CarolinaJournal.com over the weekend, uh, and it is entitled "Cooper Pipeline Deal Includes Discretionary Fund Outside Budget Process." To talk about that now. One of the uh, contributors to this story and the editor in chief of Carolina Journal, my friend Rick Henderson, joins me. On the telephone now from Raleigh. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Henry. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Uh, you know, I'm just astounded that this story is not making ripples in media across the state of North Carolina, but still, I don't think it's been reported anywhere but Carolina Journal yet. Uh, you guys are all over this, as you are many things. It's one of those things where Carolina Journal will um, – it's not Carolina Journey, by the way. It's Carolina Journal, guys. <laughs> It, you, they got they <laughs> got like on, on the t the on the TV <laughs> screen. They got Rick Hender, editor, Carolina Journal, Carolina Journal. I got distracted. Sorry, but you, you guys <laughs> were road, yeah. you guys are often on top of these stories. Um, Don Carrington broke a lot of stuff during the Easley years, and then the News Observer would reluctantly uh, uh, print it. You know, months later. But uh, let's get into this thing. Uh, the the six hundred four pipe uh, mile pipeline is something that's been in the works for a long time. It's a, it's a natural gas pipeline. They call it the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. It goes from West Virginia, uh, comes down through Virginia, into North Carolina, going to go through eight counties in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, uh, Governor McCrory was all about this, and the legislature was uh, positive about it. And then Cooper comes in as governor, and all the environmentalists are all over him. And so he has been vehemently opposed to this thing up until Friday, right? Well, he was actually pretty coy about it up until Friday because uh, his uh, head of economic development uh, basically was all for it. His environmental secretary uh, was against it, and the governor himself just sort of sat on the sidelines. And, but Friday was the first indication that we knew that he really was in favor of it, but, of course, with uh, certain strings attached, as the, our story points out. So, so he, he tells his in Department of Environmental Quality to go ahead and issue this water permit, which would kind of pave the way for this to be built. And, and the first indication that he was going to do that was on Friday, right? That's correct. And the, uh, the thing about it is, uh, all along, uh, we had been reporting on this and, and discussing it as well and saying that, look, this is a major project. It's really important for the economic development of, of, uh, the part of, the, of that part of the state, the, the, basically the I-95 corridor in east. But also, uh, it's a big project, and because of that, because of all of the interconnections with waterways and things like that, if, if there's a need to make sure that it's going to be safe, then sure, uh, put it up to the scrutiny that's necessary to make sure you're protecting waterways and air supplies and all that sort of thing. But uh, what the governor came up with uh, – it, instead of, if not in addition to this, is uh, this demand for uh, for fifty eight million dollars that he gets to spend how he chooses? So it's that's a, what the story is all about. So so all of a sudden, you guys get. I, mean, I, I assume that through some great reporting on the part of, um, of of your guy there, Dan Way, and yourself, you guys got a hold of the memorandum of understanding between uh, Dominion Power, Duke Power, and the governor's office. And there was a little detail in there that no one had reported yet, which was that these companies are going to put $58 million into a fund for the governor to oversee with no oversight from the legislature as far as we know, right? That's correct. I mean, we the, uh, the as the reporting came out, uh, WRAL, for instance, pointed out that there was a $58 million fund, but it didn't really act as if there was anything unusual about that. Uh, sometimes I blame these sorts of things on on inexperienced reporters who aren't familiar with this sort of stuff. Because a lot of the people who reported on these things during the uh, the Easley and even the you know the the era of Mark Bassett and the like aren't around anymore, so they don't have that knowledge that that we have in house. And so uh, you know Don actually was the one Carrington was the one who who said, "Hey, wait a minute, this looks like slush fun." <laughs> and so and so. We, our initial story was all, okay, the pipeline's been approved, and then Don runs in and says, wait a minute, look at this. Uh, and it also turns out that 
uh, on staff at the John Locke Foundation, which is our publisher. Uh, Joe Coletti is a, does fiscal research for us, and he was in Governor McCrory's budget office, and he looked at it and he said, "Yes, absolutely. This is this is a slush fund. This is this is." He called it bribery and extortion. So uh, <laughs> it took some so it took some uh, uh, some putting together and connecting some dots to make it work, but we got it out there. This sounds like a uh, a good old fashioned Jesse Jackson uh, Jesse Jackson shakedown. <laughs> well, it really does. That's what it sounds like. About it. You know, if you guys want to come in, we're going to oppose this unless we get a little something, something, something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so all of a yeah. sudden they're paying $58 million for the governor of North Carolina to say, okay, build it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and if you look at the story on, on our website, uh, because I just added an additional link to the memorandum, which people should look at. And what it says, and one provision of it, it says, this shall in no way be construed to be a settlement. Now, there's a reason for that language, because the Supreme Court of North Carolina has ruled that any funds from settlements must go into the uh, basically into the compensation fund that uh, it goes to, uh, you know, that goes for uh, civil and criminal uh, funds and fines and the like. And those funds generally go to pay for public schools. So that's one of the things that's, that's, that's squirrely about this deal. And the second thing, of course, is that the Supreme Court has also made it really clear that any money that comes and is spent by the executive branch has to go through the appropriations process in the legislature. Otherwise, you know, Steve Troxler, the commissioner of agriculture, could say, hey, uh, Smithfield, if you guys want to build some more hog waste uh, lagoons, that's just fine. All you got to do is put me up a new pavilion at the state fairgrounds. I mean, you have that happening all the time. It's pay to play. And so that's another reason that, that's, that this sort of thing is, is, not, uh, is not kosher at all. Is there any indication that anybody outside the governor's office knew that there was going to be this payment? Uh, I mean, for instance, let's say the state legislative leaders. Uh, Phil Berger came out on Friday kind of uh, – saying, hey, thanks to the governor for finally agreeing to the pipeline. He put out a statement on that. But you wonder if he knew that this was coming as the next wave of uh, uh, information coming out, that there was a $58 million payment. Do you know or does anyone know if the legislature was in the loop on this thing? We're asking. We're trying to find out what's going on there. Uh, we notified uh, the uh, – basically, we're getting, trying to get comments from uh, both uh, Senator Berger's office and uh, Speaker Tim Moore's office about this Friday afternoon saying, hey, there's this uh, $58 million fund here. What, what's, what's going on with that? And we really haven't gotten any kind of response from them yet. So maybe they were blindsided by it. Uh, I, I just don't know. That's something that we're going to be following today, and we're uh, going to have uh, subsequent reporting on this, of course. But uh, that's one thing that we're really looking into right now because we don't know if this was something that was just dropped on them at the last minute or it's something that they were aware of all along and just to do anything about. Well, whatever it is, it doesn't pass the smell test. I think everybody can agree to that because if you're going to build a pipeline in North Carolina and you've got concerns about environmental issues with water and, of course, you know, with all the environmentalists going nuts about fracking and all the things like that, and and then, you know, all of a sudden the governor says, okay, I'm for this thing, I'm going to agree to it, but then you find out the reason he's for it is because they've dropped $58 million into a fund. And on top of that, I mean, I, I don't – is there any precedence for uh, the governor to have a $58 million slush fund other than Golden Leaf, which <laughs> – Right. <laughs> which, which was approved by the General Assembly, by the way. So right. That's the thing. Right. Is that, yeah, the, the General Assembly did say that, – that's the difference with Golden Leaf is that it was part of the tobacco settlement. You do have the Smithfield Farms settlement which uh, easily approved when he was attorney general. But that money went into Roy the Cooper, legislature, didn't it? No. Oh, it didn't? That went into a – it went to the attorney general's office. Oh. And the attorney general – this is something that we reported on last year. You may remember that uh, the Civitas Institute filed a lawsuit about this oh, back that's in right. 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they lost at trial court. They're appealing it right now. Yeah. But, yeah, that the attorney general got that money, and uh, Roy Cooper spent it as attorney general, and Josh Stein's spending it now. And so there's precedent for this. We're still – I mean, I would argue still that that's unconstitutional also, but it's still working its way through the courts. All right. Well, I, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see a couple of things today. Uh, is the legislature going to come out and make any kind of statement and say, yeah, we were in the loop, or are they going to come out and say we weren't in the loop? Uh, I'm also going to be interested to see if the News Observer finds their way to actually report on this, 
which is amazing that they, you know, they, 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 I will say this, they did report on the $9,000 worth of Carolina tickets over the weekend, but they didn't report it like yeah. they did all of Fletcher Hartzell stuff. <laughs> 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 you know, I had a certain former elected official of North Carolina sort of drop that in my ear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see if the News and Observer comes out with anything today on this. And um, and then, you know, I'm really interested that the governor come out and explain what the heck this is all about and what he's going to do with his money. So We're going to try. We're going to yeah. see what we can do to get it to all, right. all these folks. Uh, Rick, thanks for all you guys do. You guys dig out more stuff in Raleigh that the uh, mainstream media just will ignore than anybody you have for many, many years. So God bless you. Appreciate it, man. We appreciate that a whole lot. Thank you very All much. All right, Rick Henderson from CarolinaJournal.com. All right, we got to get a break in. We're coming back. News, weather, sports still to come this hour. And uh, my buddy Jordan Shaw, who is now the executive vice president national PR and political uh, messaging firm uh, on message. He's the former chief of staff. Senator Tom Till is going to get his take on some of these issues as well. As we roll through Monday morning, January 29th, we'll be right back with WITN News. Happy New Year from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. It's time for tremendous New Year savings on remaining 2017 Ram 1500s at the Start Something New event. Get up to $14,000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks. That's up to $14,000 in total savings on new Rams. Hurry in before they're all gone. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. First cup of coffee, time with your family, and time to yourself. Good things happen early. When it comes to cancer care, the earlier the better. Early cancer screening and treatment can save your life and the lives of those you love. Believe in the power of early. Believe in the power of Vident Cancer Care. Talk to your doctor about screenings that are right for you. We're celebrating our second anniversary here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. And we're just so glad to be here in Washington. Washington is a very special place and we really enjoy working here, serving people, making sure our customers get nothing but the best. Here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, we offer a great selection of new vehicles and the best buying experience anywhere. Come see all of us here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. Don't miss the action when the Pirates take the court for a doubleheader on Saturday, February 3rd. The men's team will look to tame the Tigers of Memphis at 2 p.m., followed by the women who will tip off against the Mustangs of SMU at 5. Be among the loyal and bold by purchasing your tickets over the phone at 800-DIAL-ECU or online at ecupirates.com. Be sure to paint Minji's purple on Saturday the 3rd, starting at 2, to show your support for Pirate Basketball. This is your WITN morning news update on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. Good morning. Now, time now, 8 to 34, and we have some uh, rain vibrations moving through eastern North Carolina. We'll coming to an end here in the next uh, hour or so. We have the latest news forecast, latest news, as well as the forecast coming up as well. We'll start off with the latest news headlines from WITN.com. The time now on this Monday. 8.34, 26 minutes before 9 o'clock. We start off with Lenore County. Highway Patrol troopers are investigating an accident that killed one man and injured two others in Lenore County Saturday evening. 
The accident happened around 6.04 p.m. on Paul's Paul Road, uh, Paul's Path Road, when the driver of a 2003 Chevy Cavalier uh, lost control of his car, Trooper Tyler Potter said. The driver of the Chevy, 39-year-old Johnny Heath, was heading westbound when he ran his car off the road and overcorrected uh, into oncoming traffic. He sideswiped uh, one SUV, causing him to spin uh, around and collide with another SUV heading eastbound on Paul's Path Road. Heath was killed in the crash. Two people inside the SUV that collided with Heath were taken to the hospital. Troopers say the driver, 60-year-old Douglas Austin, was taken to UNC Lenore Healthcare, and the passenger, 61-year-old Janice Austin, was airlifted to Vida Medical Center. The driver in the sideswiped SUV was not injured. The accident is still under investigation. A Carteret County Public Schools will have a two-hour delay for students this morning due to overnight showers as well as at one time a flash flood warning that has since expired as the rain is starting to move out. School staff should report at the normal time. It's safe to do so, Carteret County Public Communications Director Tabby Nance said. Based on the information from the National Weather Service in Newport and the Carteret County Emergency Management Service offices, overnight rain will make driving in the dark hours potentially dangerous for school buses, student drivers, employees, and parent drivers. That risk has obviously now been alleviated thanks to the sunrise. And finally, in New Bern, Craven County, New Bern's Park and Rec Department is looking for public feedback on the master plans for the new Martin Mariota Park in Glen Burnie Road. Now Martin, Mark, uh, Martin Mariota donated 55 acres of land to the city in September of 2017, completing a now 888-acre plot owned by the city in that area. Uh, master plans are being drawn up for programs and amenities at the new park. In a statement, Director Foster Hughes said, quote, We are excited about the possibilities that this project brings to New Bern. This meeting is a great opportunity for citizens to provide their recommendations on what they would like to see in the park. End quote. Department is holding a drop-in style meeting this afternoon uh, from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. at Center Court in New Bern Mall for residents to give input and feedback. Those are the two that lines from WI10, WI10 back on the time now on this Monday, 8 36, 24, 8 37, 23 minutes ahead of 9 o'clock. I'm Matt Gabra. Towers, two afternoon clouds for your Monday with highs in the middle 50s. That rain chance continues to be around 70% for today. For tonight, staying cloudy with an evening shower, possible lows in the mid 30s. For your Tuesday, breezy and cooler with highs in the low 40s. That rain should move out by some point early tomorrow morning. Could see a stray morning sprinkle or flurry possible for your Tuesday. And lows tomorrow night will be right around 23 degrees. Sunshine nice. back in the forecast for your Wednesday with a high of 45. Currently 54 cold in week. Greenville. Yeah, 50, uh, 55 right now in Newburgh. Going to be cold, but we're not going to get any snow here. Mm -mm. Matt has guaranteed it. It is a guarantee, right? What? <laughs> I believe I heard. Thank you, Matt, for being here this Ooh. morning. Uh, what? <laughs> the dreaded what G just word. What happened? When Where did the I? Olympics start, by the way? I saw the promo on TV over the weekend with the people throwing snowballs at you. I yeah, wish, did that hurt? I wish they'd <laughs> asked me to come out and throw a <laughs> oh, snowball at you. There, I there you right was in the head. no shortage of people coming out of that building. People I haven't seen for 15 years were like, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, I thought you were tired. When did the Olympics start? <laughs> uh, 14th-ish? 14th, yeah. Something like that? Kind of, Kind of looking forward to it. I don't know. Curling, right? I like to see the fat guy with the broom doing the curling because I'm yeah. like, if that guy can be an Olympic athlete, I can. We can. Gives you hope. Yeah. Love I, curling. Gives the, you the, hope. You know, the, the, the guy, the fat, the, there's always the fat guy with the broom up front. Fat guy sweeping. with a little broom. Mm -hmm. Sweeping. Yeah, fat guy with a little broom. <laughs> News and weather, a service this hour of Country Mart stores here in Pitt County and Smitty's Restaurant. You know, now that I'm on my eat everything before 2 o'clock diet, I could actually go to Smitty's today have beef tips over rice. Yeah. I think I might do that. You're doing the 2 o'clock diet thing? Oh, yeah. I'm, I eat every, anything I want before 2 o'clock and eat nothing after 2 o'clock. Wow. And it's kind of working for me, although I cheated this weekend. That was an NBC News report. I know. I yeah. told you that. Yeah. I told, we talked ago. about that with Billy last week. and it That's funny. It works. That's fine. It works. Do what you, you know, got to do. You can't eat anything after like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. What about potato chips? Eh. Anything. I don't think that's anything. Anything. What about no. anything? No. What about? But I can't go to Smitty's before two o'clock. <laughs> Can I get us back on track here? I think so. Uh, Smitty's restaurant located at the uh, Country Mart store between Greenville and Bethel Highway 11. Trust me, if you haven't had Smitty's in a while, you need to check it out. It's the fifth anniversary of Smitty's. Great country cooking, made from scratch desserts. In fact, my cousin 
was up here the other day, and we're talking about trying to find a place to get some good uh, pick, pick, and cake. I said, you need to stop at Smitty's, get some of that Pat's pineapple cake, chocolate cake, whatever. And, of course, uh, Country Mart, the home in Pitt County of 93-octane ethanol-free gas, the only place you can get it in Pitt County. Great for boat engines, lawnmowers, the whole deal. And, of course, it won't be long. We'll be putting that 93-octane in our boat motors. I can't wait. Yep. But we got to get through Groundhog Day next week first. Uh, actually, it's this week, isn't it? It's Friday. Friday. By the way, Friday morning, Groundhog's Day, will be live at the Give Kids a Smile Day, which we'll tell you more about in a few minutes. 840 right now, my friend Jordan Shaw who is uh, as plugged into North Carolina politics as anyone I know. Up next, we'll be right back with Jordan. Happy New Year from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. It's time for tremendous New Year savings on new Jeeps at the Start Something New event. Buy a new 2018 Jeep Cherokee and save up to $7,000. Or you can lease a new 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for only $249 a month. Choose from Eastern North Carolina's largest selection of new Jeeps. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. We're celebrating our second anniversary here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, and we're just so glad to be here in Washington. Washington is a very special place, and we really enjoy working here, serving people, making sure our customers get nothing but the best. Here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, we offer a great selection of new vehicles and the best buying experience anywhere. Come see all of us here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. Don't miss the action when the Pirates take the court for a doubleheader on Saturday, February 3rd. The men's team will look to tame the Tigers of Memphis at 2 p.m., followed by the women who will tip off against the Mustangs of SMU at 5. Be among the loyal and bold by purchasing your tickets over the phone at 800-DIAL-ECU or online at ecupirates.com. Be sure to paint Minji's purple on Saturday the 3rd, starting at 2, to show your support for Pirate Basketball. Wow, busy show this morning. We've had some great guests. I got one more for you this morning. My friend Jordan Shaw is on the line. Jordan is the former chief of staff for uh, Tom Tillis when uh, when uh, Tom Tillis was the Speaker of the House of North Carolina. He followed him uh, when he uh, when he was elected U.S. Senator. He uh, continued to work for uh, Senator Tillis as uh, his top guy in North Carolina out of his Charlotte office, and he has just left. Senator Tillis to go into the private sector. He is now executive vice president of a national public relations and political messaging firm, which we are very familiar with. It's called On Message. Uh, and I wanted to get uh, Jordan on to talk about uh, this, this guy knows as much and is as plugged in with North Carolina politics as anybody I know. And with all this stuff happening this morning, great morning to have him on. Good morning, Jordan Shaw. How are you? Good morning, Henry. How are you? Uh, you doing everything good. How's your new job going? It's going well. It's going well. I'm enjoying the private sector and uh, really uh, excited about the opportunity to work with uh, 
variety of clients, uh, both political and uh, in, the, in the private sector. You've been you, you've world. been so, with uh, Tom Tillis a long time. So uh, getting out and why'd you ch- why'd you choose now to get out of the um, <laughs> out of the out of the inside political race and go to the outside? You know, seven years with uh, with Senator Tillis, which uh, is an eternity in, in politics. <laughs> uh, I just felt like the, I felt like the time was right. You know, uh, yeah. I felt like it was a good opportunity as as, uh, as Senator Tillis starts to ramp up towards his 2020 reelect. We felt like the time was was even better uh, for me to make this move. So I'm excited about uh, continuing to work with him, uh, but getting a chance to, to branch out and do a lot of other things as well. Well, hey, it's great to hear your voice. I miss seeing you. I hadn't seen you in a while. We've talked on the phone quite a bit uh, in, in recent uh, years, but uh, uh, thank you for being on. I'd like to get you on from time to time to, uh, to kind of give your opinion now that you're an outsider, so to speak. So let's talk about what's happening in North Carolina politics. Biggest story this morning is this story coming out of Raleigh this morning that Roy Cooper negotiated some sort of a uh, – a payoff for what looks like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to call it a slush fund, but, but I don't know what else to call it because it looks like Duke Power and uh, Dominion Power have actually put $58 million into a, a fund that's going to be totally controlled by Roy Cooper and the governor's staff in exchange for it. I mean, you just can't say it any other way. It looks like it's in exchange for allowing the permits to allow this pipeline to be built. I mean, is, do you think that's a fair assessment of what we're seeing? Well, it certainly doesn't look good, does it? Uh, you know, I, I think it's it's an interesting position for the governor, uh, a guy who, has, as you said earlier on your show, was, has been fairly coy uh, about his position on this pipeline. Uh, he's been getting pushback from uh, his friends on the far left, environmental groups, uh, about this project for, gosh, a year and a half now. Uh this is obviously an important project for the state. It's important for the, for the state's economy, uh, but I think you you enter this this agreement, this fund uh, with uh, with these companies, and and it just stinks, uh, as you said before. I think that it, it lends itself to a lot of um, negative, potentially negative publicity for the governor. Now, luckily for, for Governor Cooper, he has a friendly media. On his side, uh, I think it'll take a lot for uh, folks in the mainstream press to report this as a bad thing. But I think that the the interesting point today is going to be what what do we hear out of Jones Street? Uh, what do the, the guys in the legislature say? Were they included in this? Were they not? And I guarantee you, if they were not, um, then um, they will uh, they'll make some noise about it. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. I, I'm with you. I think the uh, proof in the pudding on this, uh, whether this turns out to be a full-blown scandal or not, is how uh, Phil Berger and uh, and and the Speaker of the House uh, uh, react today. I don't, you know, I don't know how involved they were. It was interesting that Berger came out and actually applauded Cooper's decision on Friday about this. And you got to mm-hmm. wonder if Berger knew that, you know, what was in that memorandum of understanding. You kind of think he he. He would have had access to it if he wanted to. So uh, I don't know if he'll back up on that today or not. It'll be interesting to see, won't it? One would think. I mean, I, I think that th- there are, um, as as Rick Henderson mentioned, that there is some precedent for this. Uh, although I would I would argue it's not necessarily uh, good precedent uh, in in the state's history for doing this kind of thing. I would be very surprised if the legislature was fully informed and fully aware uh, of this effort. I also think, you know, I, I would predict that Governor Cooper will uh, try to use this money uh, to appease some of the groups who have been upset with him uh, for, for allowing this to go through. So I would, yeah. I would fully expect uh, an effort to uh, use this money uh, on environmental projects uh, that, uh, that those groups are going to support. Or maybe Carolina basketball tickets. It's, it's, you know, it, either either or. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's talk. You know, look, as, as a guy who uh, as a guy who graduated from Virginia Tech and grew up a Duke fan, I would say if if Governor Cooper's spending that much money this year on Carolina tickets, he may be getting a ripoff. He got screwed. All right, so yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, let's talk about uh, the 2018 and upcoming 2020 election. Uh, we're thinking a lot over here about uh, the, the 18 election because a lot of rumors about who might run against Walter Jones. We've got two people in the race already in the Republican primary with uh, Scott Dacey and uh, and Phil Law announcing last week. Phil Law, is this will be his third run at Walter. 
Um, but, you know, looking ahead to the 2020 governor's election, there's some interesting things happening we had not talked about this morning, some developments, developments over the weekend on that as well I wanted to mention to you. And that's uh, – the, the fact that, you know, Dan Forrest is clearly running for governor. He's uh, finishing, he'll be finishing his second term as lieutenant governor. He is, um, you know, he, he's made no bones about it. He's told me personally that he's going to run for governor. He's out raising money. He's been trying to uh, develop friends and raise cash for this already. And there's been a lot of talk about, well, will Phil Berger run for governor? Uh, Phil Berger has been sending uh, full-color brochures statewide now for over a year, and you wonder why a guy that's uh, a runner for that's a Senate President pro tem that only has to be elected in Rockingham County would be sending stuff statewide. And then uh, you know, this Pat McCrory, you know, uh, Pat has not said yet what he's going to do, and uh, most of us who are close to Pat McCrory believe that he really wants to run again, but I don't know whether he can or not. Now the the, the rap on. Uh, Dan Forrest has been Kenny Ray's money. And then over the weekend, we learned that one donor has put in $2.4 million into his super PACs. And uh, I, I don't know this guy. Uh, you and I were talking about this over the weekend. His name is Lindbergh from, uh, from Durham. Uh, what do you know about this guy? What can you tell us? And are you shocked that one donor would put $2.4 million into uh, Dan Forrest's campaign? What's this all about? Yeah, it, it's it's really um, uh, it's a it's a monumental development for uh, for the lieutenant governor. I uh, really can't overstate the importance. We don't know uh, this this guy well. Um, obviously, he um, he's a believer in Dan Forrest, uh, and so you know it, it's interesting. Roy Cooper uh, will be hard to beat. Uh, he's going to be well funded. He will be one of the uh, the top um, priorities for the Democrat uh, Party in 2020 to protect. Um, the key to beating him is is the ability to raise serious money uh, to challenge to challenge his financial advantage. Uh, Dan Forrest is well liked. Uh, he's he's incredibly well organized on the ground. But again, the the, the rap on him has been um, uh, some folks have have questioned his ability to raise that kind of money. He's never had to do that before. Uh, and so the past couple of years, uh, people have been watching him to to see uh, how is his finance operation coming together, what kind of money can he put together? And uh, up until this, this past uh, week, um, those questions were made. But I would, I would say that if you have a multi-million dollar donor uh, on the hook this early in the, in the cycle, uh, that significantly raises the stakes for anyone who looks to, goes up to, to go up against Dan Forrest. I think it becomes a, a much harder sell. Obviously, when you get into the cycle, you can't uh, coordinate with the super PAC, so Hard dollars are different than soft dollars, but the fact remains that is a huge donor. Uh, that is a level of support that uh, I really can't anticipate any other Republican candidate getting from one single person in the state. So it's a huge development as far as I'm concerned in 2020. And um, if I was Dan Forrest or his people, I would I would really be celebrating it uh, over the next couple of weeks. What do you uh, what do you think about who's going to run? Do you see uh, Berger running? Do you also think that McCrory will get back in the race? I don't know about Berger. I think you know why would why would a guy who, as you say, only has to get elected to Rockingham County, and I would say is potentially the most powerful political figure in North Carolina, why would he run for governor um, against a, a, a popular, uh, relatively popular incumbent? Be because that, because being in the Senate ain't being governor. <laughs> That's true. That is true. But but when you when you play the game like Phil Berger, um, I think that sometimes he has uh, he has uh, accumulated more power than potentially even the governor. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I think that uh, Senator Berger um, is is one of the shrewdest politicians uh, out there. I think that he um, uh, nothing he does uh, comes without some calculation behind it. Uh, so I I don't anticipate that he's going to run. I may be wrong, uh, but. He has been talking about running for higher office for a few cycles. He talked about it in 2014 when Senator Tillis ran for the Senate. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But I think um, I think that his his focus will continue to be on the Senate. Certainly, the things that he does, uh, the statewide brochures um, and some other things, they certainly help him raise money toward the Senate caucus. So that's part of that's part of the calculation. I would be shocked if he ran for governor. Uh, governor McCrory. Uh, I think is probably more likely to do so. Um, I think he is uh, testing the waters. Certainly, he's made uh, finance calls and 
Uh, I think he has asked some of his donors to uh, to stay uh, on the fence until he makes a decision. So it would not surprise me if he jumped back in. Hmm. He wants to be governor. He enjoys that job. I think he uh, he sees that as his um, his home base, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, we'll see how we'll see how he goes. Uh, what he does over the next couple of years. Jordan Shaw on the telephone. Jordan was with uh, Senator Tom Tillis for uh, seven years through the legislature and into uh, his his job at, at the U.S. And, uh, we've got like a minute left. Let me, let me uh, get you to comment. We got the State of the Union address tomorrow night. Uh, we, 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 we had the government shut down for three days and the, a new deadline coming in two weeks or less. Uh, Senator Tillis has been at ground zero on working on the DACA stuff. Is this? Yep. Are we headed for another government shutdown, or did uh, did Chuck Schumer l- learn his lesson and say uh, enough of that? I don't know how fast of a learner Chuck Schumer is, so we may be headed toward another. But <laughs> the important thing to remember is uh, DACA. Uh, DACA has been um, DACA and the immigration issue at large uh, has been uh, bombarded by people on both sides of the aisle for thirty years who refuse to get anything done. Uh, I think we have an opportunity to get something done over the next couple of weeks, and Ertilis is in the middle of that process. Uh, but the challenge is, like everything else, getting to 60 votes in the Senate. So we'll see if uh, enough people on the right and the left are willing to come to the middle and get something accomplished. But um, uh, up until this point, that has not been the case. So getting to 60 in the U.S. Senate on anything yeah. uh, is a challenge, certainly on immigration reform. Jordan, that, that was great. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're now in the private sector so I can use you from time to time as one of my political go-to guys on the show. Yeah, I'm a free agent now, so let's make this happen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Good talking to you, man. Appreciate you, it. Sir. Jordan Shaw, who is now executive vice president of On Message, which is a national PR and political firm. All right, and we're out of time. We've had a great show this morning. Boy, it was It was power-packed, wasn't it? A lot going on. So we'll continue to follow this pipeline story out of Raleigh. Everybody have a nice day. Be careful out there. Could still be some more heavy rain. Though Matt says we're probably done with that, but still rain and cold temperatures coming. We'll see you tomorrow. It's the Big Zero event at Greenville Toyota. Put zero down on new Toyotas. Corollas, $14,999 or $149 a month. Camrys, $19,999 or $169 a month at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. Happy New Year from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. It's time for tremendous New Year savings on new Jeeps at the Start Something New event. Buy a new 2018 Jeep Cherokee and save up to $7,000. Or you can lease a new 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for only $249 a month. Choose from Eastern North Carolina's largest selection of new Jeeps. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. That first cup of coffee, time with your family, and time to yourself. Good things happen early. When it comes to cancer care, the earlier the better. Early cancer screening and treatment can save your life and the lives of those you love. Believe in the power of early. Believe in the power of Vident Cancer Care. Talk to your doctor about screenings that are right for you. Don't miss the action when the Pirates take the court for a doubleheader on Saturday, February 3rd. The men's team will look to tame the Tigers of Memphis at 2 p.m., followed by the women who will tip off against the Mustangs of SMU at 5. Be among the loyal and bold by purchasing your tickets over the phone at 800-DIAL-ECU or online at ecupirates.com. Be sure to paint Minji's purple on Saturday the 3rd, starting at 2, to show your support for Pirate Basketball. 
We're starting the new year with zero down on every vehicle. It's Greenville Toyota's Big Zero event, where you put zero down and make zero first payment or get 0% financing for 60 months. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money.